with that, lots to go through. Lachlan Megan from Go Markets is our first guest of the hour and uh, comes to us now live via Skype. Uh, Lachlan, uh, yeah, welcome. It's a uh, lot to go through. Let's kick off with these jobs numbers. Uh, they were stellar uh, in the context, in the context that they were pretty coming off uh, some, some weak numbers in the prior months. What did you make about the reaction we've seen in the market? Uh, I'm not surprised, mate. Uh, the, the Aussie dollar barely ticked up and it's pretty much finished where it started before these figures. The, the narrative in the last few days, I mean, things have changed so fast. I mean, we were being pushed and pulled by inflation and, and expectations of central bank actions, which employment was a, a big part of. Um, it's all about um, financial stress at the moment. So I'm really not surprised. These, these figures didn't move the Aussie dollar much. I think a month ago, if they'd, they'd come out this strong, we would have seen a really big reaction. But um, as you know, things have changed a lot in the last last week or so. Let's get to some of those catalysts that might go into course and ructions moving forward. Uh, looms large, the ECB meeting coming up tonight. Uh, up until about, you know, probably 48 hours ago, it was seen as a car blanche decision. It's going to be 50 basis points. And then maybe signaling more aggression from there. Clearly things have changed a lot. What's the likely outcome now? Yeah, it's amazing. It's, it's actually quite stunning how these, these uh, rate expectations have changed, not just the ECB, but I mean, look at the Australian cash rate uh, futures yield as well, curve now, and, uh, and, and even the US. It's, 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 I'm looking at the Bloomberg terminal today, these charts of the expectations, and it's, it's, I've never seen anything like it, to be honest. So ECB tonight, I, I don't envy them. They're the first come off the rank. We've got the, what, the Fed, we've got the Swiss National Bank and the Bank of England next week. So they're going to be the canary in the coal mine, I guess. I mean, at the moment, as you said, they were fully priced in for a 50 up until a couple of days ago. Now it's slightly above a 25. So I think a 25 looks very likely, certainly not a 50 by the way things are looking. Um, and I think the other central banks will probably take a cue, especially the Fed next week, which is a 50-50 of a 25 or a, or a, or a pause. Um, if the ECB does it at 25 tonight, which is likely then to see what the market reaction is to that, I, I think would probably sway the Fed's decision a bit next week um more importantly too i think the ecb statement to see what type of language comes out of that because it's been very hawkish the last couple of meetings so see if they pair that back a bit with um you know in the current situation going on in the banking sector it was only this time last week mate we're talking about the fed uh, funds rate going north of uh, five percent and then some and uh, all of a sudden it's just completely about face let's put a pretty big assumption out there and say that they managed to go and ring fence the uh, concerns around credit swiss and maybe some spillover effects to other lenders. What do you think the Fed will go and do in this scenario? Do you think they'll still be feeling confident enough to go and pursue a 25 basis points given the current environment? Oh, next week, the situation's very fluid. Though. I think it's really hard to predict. I, I have a gut feeling that we'll still do 25. Um, as I said then before, I, I think the ECB reaction tonight, if they do a 25, if it really causes some stress, mate, I mean, the Fed's got a week to, to kind of digest what the market reaction to that is. That, I, I think that'll play a bit of a part too. Um, I, I had a look at the, the Fed fund futures too, and you're right. It's, I mean, it's only pricing in one more hike, and then after that, uh, a pause, and then 100 basis points are cut by the end of the year, which is you know a stunning change from a week ago. Um, the Fed, I think the US, they're still looking pretty strong in most of their figures. I can't see the Fed pausing next week. Um, but yeah, as I said, I mean, the situation's fluid, and I mean, how much has it changed so rapidly from two days? Days ago, a couple of banks in the US no one had heard of fall down, and then you know overnight we got one of the biggest banks in the world similar. So the situation could change in the next seven days, you know, dramatically. Lachlan, uh, just to go and end off uh, the Kiwi, give us a sense of the activity we're seeing at the moment. An absolute shocker when it came to Q4 GDP. Very dated data, but a 0.6% quarter-on-quarter contraction uh, during those uh, three-month period. The RBNZ was looking for a 0.6% gain. Now, clearly, there's a, a big miss there. Does that change the narrative when it comes to uh, RBNZ interest rate settings moving forward? Oh, oh certainly, mate. I mean, I mean, that's that's what these central banks are trying to do, aren't they? They're trying um, their best to to res- you know get, restrict financial conditions to tighten them up. Um, they'd be happy to see some of these figures weaker than expected. Um, I mean, the RBA today, I think, be a bit unhappy with that employment report. It puts them in a bit of a hard place, but. The Kiwis, uh, you're getting this feeling that all central banks are peaking in their, in their rate hiking, especially what's happened over the last couple of days. I think, though, they're at their top now. Um, the Kiwi dollars performed pretty well, especially against the Aussie recently. But we'll see. I, I, don't, I can't see them hiking again, mate, with figures like that and with what's going on in the, in the, in the wider economic space either.